Good afternoon. My name is Christy Robinia. I'm the Associate Dean Director for the School of Nursing, and I'm here to welcome all of you to tonight's pinning ceremony of our LPN class. And we're just thrilled that we're doing this in person. It's, it's so wonderful after the last um, year and a half we've all had. So this evening, on behalf of Northern Michigan University's President Fritz Erickson, our Provost Carrie Schuling, our Dean Dale Kapla, and all of our School of Nursing faculty and staff, I would like to welcome you to this very joyful celebration of our practical nursing students who are completing our final LPN cohort at NMU. A determined little virus attempted to derail all of our plans and intentions of these students. But despite that, the students were successful. They persevered and of course, we're all able to be here tonight because of that. I truly believe it's essential to mark milestones in life with ceremony. The author Elizabeth Gilbert once wrote, ceremony is essential to humans. It's a circle that we draw around important events to separate the momentous from the ordinary. And ritual is a sort of magical safety harness that guides us from one stage of our lives into the next, making sure we do not stumble and lose our way. I would like to thank these graduates for stepping forward and taking the reins from their predecessors who are starting to retire in record numbers. The struggles won't be over with school. Nursing is a profession that demands sacrifice. And I wish all of you the following. First of all, that you persevere. The first six months to the first year of the first job is the hardest. And that repeats any time you switch specialties. Be kind and be patient with yourselves. Second, I wish that you encounter collegial colleagues. When you run into crabby colleagues, cut them some slack and try very hard not to take it personally. Remember the concept of displacement. We see it all over healthcare. Nurses are notorious for displacing their stress onto each other. Don't reciprocate. Try to care for one another the way you care for your patients. Throughout my career, it was LPNs who buoy, buoyed me on difficult shifts. In fact, two of the, my most favorite mentors who I think about and hear almost daily in my mind were LPNs. They were the ones who took the time to help and to encourage me when I was a new LPN and then again when I was a new RN. Number three, make sure that you stand up for yourself and for our profession, nursing. As you grow in confidence of your skills, you have the additional responsibility of enhancing our profession. Nurses are uniquely educated to address patient care, including mind, body, and spirit. Be proud of your unique education. We are different. Four, I hope that you find the right role models. Every parent in this room knows that who you ki your kids hang out with often determines how much trouble they get in. Seek and find mentors, and whenever you switch a position, repeat the process. Sometimes they aren't that easy to find, so remember point one, persevere. Number five, I wish that you love your work. You won't have an excuse not to. If you're unhappy somewhere after a year and please give it a year. Find a new place. We need happy nurses. It also helps if they have a sense of humor. Laughter lifts spirits and heals souls. If you've never heard of Viktor Frankl, he wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. And if you haven't read it, you need to put it on your list as a nurse. It's essential. He wrote, it is well, he survived the atrocities of the World War II concentration camps. And it's a very, um, incredible book. He wrote, it is well known that humor, more than anything else in the human makeup, can afford an aloofness and an ability to rise above any situation, even if only for a few seconds. Sometimes that's all any of us need, 
We just need a few seconds of reprieve in order to carry on. And please remember that as you study for your NCLEX exam. So we're here tonight to mark the end of a rigorous passage through the theory and clinical classes of a nursing curriculum. And we do this with a pinning ceremony. The pinning ceremony is a symbolic pinning of a student nurse by a nurse. It symbolizes that they have passed each hurdle to be worthy of membership into a proud and loyal society that is the profession of nursing. This class is particularly special as once again, it marks the closing of our long-standing practical nursing program at Northern. Now, I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge all of you, families, friends, all of you, thank you. Thank you for supporting these students, for being there with encouragement, with comfort, for providing the necessary foundation that allowed them to endure and build resiliency. There are patients and families that desperately need them, and you are no small part of their current achievement and future successes. I would also like to acknowledge those who mentored and assisted these graduates. That includes every single nurse along the way, even the ones that were scary. They all helped you build resiliency or tenacity of purpose. I would also like to thank our nursing faculty, in particular, Jamie Crabb, Sarah Jennings, and Mary Franzik, and Michelle Johnson. I want to thank Mike Strahan, our, our School of Nursing librarian, and our simulation specialist, Julie Dobson, and NTC supervisor, Kendall. So finally, I'm done, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Jamie Crabb. Dr. Crabb has steered the ship of this final LPN class faithfully for these past two years. She has been truly dedicated and invested in your success. She was your sincere champion, as was Professor Jennings. And I would like to publicly thank them for their commitment to ensure that every single one of you are sitting on the stage tonight. Jamie? Hello, everybody. My name is Jamie Crabb, and as she said, I am the PM Program Coordinator. So I wrote a little speech tonight, and I will, um, unfortunately, I'll be reading from my speech, so bear with me. I just want to make sure that I get all my pearls of wisdom out to these students. So. Good evening and welcome to all of our friends, family, and esteemed NMU administrators in attendance. Tonight, I would like to offer some of life's lessons, if you will. Insight for the speech comes from a book called Life's Little Instruction Book by H. Jackson, Jr. So in honor of that, we will keep it simple. I would like to congratulate our 112th LPN class from NMU. 112 is a big number, especially when you look at the number of graduates, the number of nurses that was in each program that we graduated. So let's take a little walk back in time. The history of nursing at Northern Michigan University began with the practical nursing program. This program was established in 1948 and is one of the oldest programs on NMU's campus. The program was initiated in response to the regional need for individuals trained in the technical skills of patient care. The program began as part of a public service division, later moving into the School of Nursing in 1970, and then moving into the Jacob Eddy Skills Center in 1984. In 1988, the practical nursing department became a part of the School of Nursing and Allied Health, located in the College of Nursing and Allied Health. In 1990, the program shifted from a granting a non-academic program diploma into an academic certificate program. So it wasn't always a academic certificate that you guys got. As many of you know, the LPM program was initially suspended in 2011, then was reinstated in the fall of 2013, and has carried on until now, and after tonight, this will be the last LPN cohort of Northern Michigan University. I am so proud of you guys. Um, I'd like to read some statements from H. Jackson Jr.'s book and link them to nursing. First, treat everyone you meet like you want to be treated. 
We did not always experience open arms when we went into the clinical setting. I give you all kudos as you weathered this. You will see this time and again in life. It's not just specific to nursing. So make the best of bad situations and give people the benefit of the doubt. Do battle against prejudice and discrimination wherever you find it and seek out the good in people. Sometimes you have patients that will pull at your heartstrings for the strife that they are dealing with or their inability to beat the disease they are battling. Never give up on anyone. Miracles happen every day. Don't take good health for granted. As a new nurse in the field, you face a giant learning curve. The advantage is you already know your CPR. As you gain knowledge, you will make mistakes. We are human. But remember to admit those mistakes and learn from them. If, <clears throat> if you are not afraid, if you, if you are not afraid when you walk in that door, then we would be worried. But I would say every one of you has that concern. Everyone has that worry. Will I be enough for my patient? And what I want to tell you is you will. So be brave, even if you're not pretend to be. No one can tell the difference. Smile a lot. It costs you nothing and is beyond price. Be insatiably curious. Ask why a lot. This is one of the ways that you will learn why nurses do things in different ways. Maybe they have a trick of the trade that actually gets the, the process done faster. Be willing to ask them that. Treat the patient and not the monitor. Remember the pregnant nurse running down the hall because her patient showed a lethal heart rhythm on the monitor and when she got to the room, the patient was brushing their teeth. I have met many amazing nurses up to this point in my career. I would like to tell you about one I met while I was in nursing school. It was one of my first medical surgical nursing rotations. I was scared and overwhelmed as a student nurse. I was assigned to a nurse named Sue Crabb. I was directed to get vitals, which I did, and then I went back into the room to bring my patient their water. When I went back to the room, the nurse had just entered the patient's room. She pulled out the garbage can and she sat down with the blue patient chart, not the electronic health record, <laughs> back to the blue patient chart. And I watched from behind as she talked with that patient about how they were feeling, not just their condition, but how they were feeling and hitting on that mental component as well. I knew right then and there that was the type of nurse that I wanted to be. Ironically, I married her son. So here I am. <laughs> so learn to listen. Opportunity knocks very softly. Sometimes we miss it. So if we learn to listen, we'll capture that. Never deprive someone of hope. It might be all that they have. Don't forget a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. And you guys are included in this. And you matter. And you can make a difference. In nursing, we face life and death every single day. No matter how dire the situation, keep your cool. Remember that you are the advocate for your patient. Don't be afraid to speak up to them. Remember that we're their voice when they can't speak up for themselves. We care for these individuals in some of the worst times of their life. Practice empathy. Try to see things from other people's point of view. Remember that we do not see what our patient is battling inside. Oftentimes we look at just the medical condition that they're suffering from. Life is precious and goes by so fast. Cherish it and make the most of each day. Look for the good. Don't miss the magic of the moment by focusing on what's to come. Best of luck to all of you as you live life to the fullest. And now I welcome up Mary Franzik to do the presentation of the class. I had the honor to work with these students at Bell Hospital in one of their, in the final clinic. And 
I want to tell you they're a phenomenal group of students and they work excellently as a team. Thank you for that. Alexandria McNally, daughter of John and Linda McNally, being pinned by Gina Tudor. Deidre Hill, daughter of Christine Hill and Deborah and Douglas Hill, being pinned by Valerie DeLabic. Veronica Steinmetz, daughter of Crystal and Brad Steinmetz, being pinned by Sarah Jennings. Autumn Sturgis, daughter of Michelle and Brian Inman, Jeff Sturgis, being pinned by Sarah Jennings. Courtney DeWent, daughter of Tracy and Rodney DeWent, fiance of ethnic Vrugink, being pinned by Katie Tinknell. And I practiced that too yesterday. <laughs> That's why they're laughing. Oh. <laughs> Katie Rankinen, daughter of Wayne and Pam Rankinen, being pinned by Cheryl Salmer. Kiara Kane, daughter of Paul Alto and Lisa Sarvello, wife of Mitch Kane, mother of Sophia Kane, being pinned by Michael Perot. Stephanie Enrietti, daughter of Tracy Enrietti and Paula Sanchez, mother of Marissa and Jayla Snell, being pinned by Sarah Bannon. <laughs> James McCoy III, son of James McCoy Jr. and Patricia McCoy, being pinned by James McCoy. Bridget Wagner, daughter of Mike and Sheila Wagner, being pinned by Mara Judici. Alyssa Smith, daughter of Scott and Kathy Smith, being pinned by Sarah Jennings.
Gina Bassanese, daughter of Kathleen Lowe's and Tony Bassanese, being pinned by Sarah Jennings. Justine Smith, daughter of Regina and Herman Smith, being pinned by Sarah Jennings. Sydney Mainville, uh, who was unable to make it tonight, daughter of Angela Jack and Jason Gothier, being pinned virtually. And now Katie Rankinen will now share the class thank you. To say nursing school has been a challenge would definitely be one of the biggest understatements I've ever made. And I think all of my classmates can agree with me on that one. Nursing school in general is hard, but when you throw a pandemic on top of it, it makes it nearly impossible, but we made it. And I can't express how proud I am of each and every one of you that are up here with me today. I know for me, one of the biggest difficulties during this process was making sure I kept not only all of my patients safe, but also my family when I would come home from class, clinic, and especially COVID testing. To all of you people in the audience, trust me, I've come a long way to be standing up here without a mask on. <laughs> Uh, with this many people in a, uh, one room, even if it is huge. You're looking at the girl that would wipe her skin with Lysol wipes, even though my instructors told me it was a bad idea. <laughs> this pandemic made it difficult for us to get the patient interactions we needed. Our whole first semester, we weren't able to go to nursing homes, which is completely understandable, and get the hands-on experience most programs in the past were able to do. Most of our learning was done on one another and through simulation. Taking a blood pressure on one of my classmates, classmates was much less nerve wracking compared to taking a blood pressure on my first actual patient. I think for most of us, our first patient experience was on the cardiac floor at MGH. Talk about scary. We all grew so much in those few days we were able to be there. I think COVID is the most obvious hurdle we ran into during this program, but if I put that aside, there are many other things that should also be mentioned. Family. Everyone in this cohort knows my family is everything to me, and that is why I am where I am today. Without them, I don't know how I would have made it this far. I can't thank them enough for dealing with my crabbiness, sorry, Dad, and my anxiousness over the past year or so. For those of you that have been working throughout this whole program, hats off to you. It takes a special type of person to be able to balance work and nursing school all at the same time and get as far as we all have. On top of that, we have a couple moms in this group that really deserve all the credit in the world. I can't imagine going home and caring for a family while also trying to find some time to study and find some time to rest. And you guys did it and did it well. Same goes to our professors. Lots of credit needs to be given to them for de dedicating much, so much of their time to help mold us into the best nurses we can be. Not only the best nurses, but the best men and women we can be. We truly have become a family in the last year and I have learned so much from one another we have learned so much from an, one another. With that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the memories, laughs, and embarrassing moments. There are some I will never forget. Lastly, I want to end by saying a two-word saying that I have etched onto my stethoscope. Remember why. Remember why you became a nurse, and be sure to treat your patients how you would want you or your family to be treated. Thank you. And now Courtney and DeWent will come up and talk about the lighter side of nursing. Hi. <laughs> um, well, unlike our lectures, I'd like to keep this short. The practical nursing cohort of 2021 has spent a tremendous amount of time together, six feet, an N95, and face shield apart, of course, over the past 10 months. So, unoriginally, I asked my class to write down one sentence describing these past two and a half semesters together. 
So here are some of the things that people said. Nursing school gave me shingles. <laughs> Don't forget your Clorox wipes. Nursing school, now I understand why there's a nursing shortage. Should I deep clean or study? <laughs> Sleep, never heard of her. When we're playing Jeopardy and everyone answers what is Bactrim because no one knows what's going on. <laughs> no amount of iced coffee can make me want to do this. All babies look like rotisserie chickens. <laughs> The local bars and I are on a first name basis. Is there a chance for extra credit? Bless you, Justine. <laughs> I can't hear anything. That's <laughs> the reason why is because your stethoscope is on backwards. Um, why are you putting hand sanitizer on? You haven't even touched anything. And diagnosing myself with all the diseases and, di and disorders that we lectured about. So those were some of the things that people said to describe these last couple of semesters. Um, in spite of that, I cannot thank Sarah and Jamie enough for being accepting of us showing up late with coffee in hand, totally letting us wing it at Bell, picking up FaceTime calls at any time of the day, and being the hot topic of our nursing group chat. <laughs> These past semesters zoomed by, quite literally, and although being a nursing student during a global pandemic was far from perfect, emotionally and physically draining, and sometimes weeks felt like years, we all succeeded together and made memories that will last a lifetime. Thank you. And now we're going to lower the screen and let you guys into a little bit of what nursing education is like.
In our service today is going to be Kiara Kane. She's going to read our class prayer. Lord, help me bring comfort to those who most need it. Give me strength for this selfless service and enable me to give hope to those who I am called to serve. In your name, amen. And next in the service is Ali Alexandra McNally coming up to do the pledge. Okay, I'd like to ask all my classmates to stand up, please. <clears throat> I pledge myself as a member of the nursing profession in the presence of this assembly to uphold the standards of my profession and to contribute to the betterment of these standards I will use the knowledge gained in making sound nursing judgment and will help responsible and accountable not only to myself but to those who are entrusted to my care and under my management. And last but not least is our wonderful Professor Sarah Jennings. And bless you, Justine. <laughs> and she is going to talk about Florence Nightingale. Justine sneezes, one of the classic classics from our group. So good evening. My name is Sarah Jennings. I've had the honor of working with this great crew this year. If you're following along in your program, you may be confused why I'm standing here at the podium as opposed to the distinguished Dr. Robinia. But as my students will tell you, I don't pass up the chance to talk into the mic <laughs> and the opportunity <laughs> presented itself. <laughs> so here I am. I will be concluding our ceremony this evening by sharing the story of Florence Nightingale uh, before lighting of the candles. But first, I wanted to share a few of my own parting words. As instructors, we often talk about making sure the people we graduate are people we would want to take care of us and our loved ones. Are they compassionate, capable, and knowledgeable? Are they astute, follow procedures, and know where to find answers if they don't already have them? I am here to confidently say we are in good hands. I know if the bus pulled up to the ER at 3 a.m. and every worst patient scenario unloaded into their care, they would do their level best to be the nurse that they needed to be. Katie would quietly hold the hand of a frightened patient, even if she needed a gallon of hand sanitizer when she left the room. <laughs> Kiara would go home worried and call in later that day to make sure her patient was doing okay. Both of them would check the obituaries together <laughs> because of course they'd be together. Steph would see 10 patients in five minutes because she's a force to be reckoned with when she's on a mission and she won't miss a thing. And then she'll go home and be an incredible mom. Bridget will take the anxiety out of the room by striking up a natural conversation with her pleasant demeanor. Sydney will get straight to the point while Bridget is chatting, <laughs> making sure everything is as it should be. And of course, they'd also be together. Courtney will make sure she gets the full rundown and come up with a game plan to tackle it all because she won't work on a unit that's ratchet. <laughs> no cap. Did I say that right, Court? <laughs> James, or shall I say Trey, will calmly and quietly with the most heartwarming smile do what needs to get done and chart everything with the precision and explanation of an expert writer. Gina will see the whole patient, <clears throat> not just the admitting diagnosis, but all of who they are to focus on healing while Justine chats them up so much that they'll forget their complaints, all while having the most pure and heartfelt interest in helping the patient heal. And of course, they'd also be together. Veronica would jump at the chance to go help the NICU, to be the calm, quiet presence all babies need, 
Alyssa would use her breaks to look up anything she doesn't already know because she pretty much has all the answers, even if she doesn't say them out loud. <laughs> Autumn would peruse the charts for good baby names, put them into alphabetical order, and then color code them. Everyone would benefit from her organizational skills, including her patients whose meds would be given exactly on time. Allie would hit every room, make sure each patient was settled, and ask what could be done next. If it needs to get done, Allie's not messing around, she's on it. And last but not least, Dee would take the most honorary patient on the floor because there isn't much she can't handle that's thrown at her, except maybe hugs. <laughs> <laughs> The bottom line is this team with all their diverse strengths can do anything. At the beginning of the year, we were many people thrown together, but your unique characters made you an amazing team that pulled together and propelled each of you to graduation. Know your worth. Know that as you venture into a new job, a new team, you bring value. Don't be afraid to shine. Bring your strength and you will be invaluable member to every team you are on so that together you provide the best care to us and our loved ones. Now we would like to commemorate the founder of our modern nursing, Florence Nightingale, by lighting the candles. Florence was famous for tending wounded soldiers at night by candlelight. As a young woman from a rich family, she certainly was discouraged from putting herself in harm's way to tend to the most vulnerable. However, she ignored the protests and eventually established nursing as a noble calling requiring professional diligence. These wildcat nurses have trained hard in order to stand ready 24 seven to care for all of us in our most vulnerable state. We know that Florence is proud of them. We will now light the candles.